appreciate you being on this call. And so it's the top of the hour. So I'm going to get started. And so one of the things when you look at this slide here, how to build the perfect exit strategy, I know we all have days where we go, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> what am I doing? And then again, on another day, this is the world's greatest career secret. I mean, you call your own shots, you do your own thing. You don't have to ask permission to go on vacation. You don't have certain hours that you have to work. And if you want to work all night long, you can't, you know, and if you want to go in at noon, you can't. And then all I'm going to ask you to do is just explore the possibilities that let's say your exit strategy isn't today. It isn't this next year in 2024. And maybe it's 10 years from now. Maybe it's 2034. Maybe it's five years from now, 2029. Gosh, these numbers sound crazy to me. So think about where you are and it doesn't matter. You may say, oh, I'm not doing anything probably till 10 or 15 years, but the exit strategy starts today. So I appreciate you being on the call. So let's go to the next slide, Stephanie. So a lot of you are repeat performers with me and I appreciate that because you know I deliver a lot. Someone said to me last time, last week when I did the one on the um, buyer uh, value prop and the seller value prop, which are all on the maps YouTube. And they said it was like a Memrix commercial. And I go, what was a Memrix commercial? And I forgot. It's when you're sitting in the chair and that guy's hair is blown back because there's just so much sound coming at him. Well, I always do that on a call because I've been around for 44 years in real estate. I was a top producer for many, many years. Uh, 100 million in volume year after year. Stephanie's on this call and she was there too. And what I want to share with you about that is I also work for Dave Ramsey. I've been a coach for over 25 years. I've coached more people than anyone in the country. And so I was coaching and selling real estate at the same time. So with that said, there's I was logged 10 years ago at 70,000 one-on-one -on -one calls. So there's been a lot more. So I've heard a lot of great ideas. I've worked with the top producers in the country. So you're going to benefit from that in what I see. So let's go to the next slide. So not to be maudlin, but I'm, I want to energize you and say, what are we going to do? You know, let's start today and think about what is the value of our business? So monetarily speaking, 5% of us will be successful in creating a life of freedom and 95% will continue to struggle their entire lives. Now, that's a national statistic that when you turn 65, that this is what happens to most people. So let's look at the next slide. And all I'm saying to you is no matter where you are in your business, you start thinking about the value of your business and your exit strategy. And I'm going to give you several ways to think about this. So look at this for 100 people who turn 65. One person will be wealthy. Four will be financially secure. Five will continue working, not because they want to, but because they have to. And 36 will be dead. Hmm, interesting. 54 will be broke, dependent on family, friends, and charity, dependent upon those people. And so I want you to hear this. Yes, you can have a recording of this. If you go to MAPS uh, YouTube channel, you can, you can get the recording in the slides there. So if all else fails, you can email me at monicakw.com. All right. So I want you to think about that. Where are you going to be positioned? Where are you going to, you know, throw a dart on the dartboard and say, that's me? And so, you know, think about, but your definition of wealthy is that your bills are paid, maybe your house is paid for, your cars are paid, you have enough passive income. What about profit share with KWRI? Don't forget about that. Um, that's a major contribution to a lot of agents. And that's a really good thing to think about because it goes for two generations. Some of you might not have known that. Okay, the next slide, Stephanie. So on this particular slide, which is really a great slide to think about. So you have to think about your exit strategy. So how many do you have in the completes? Now, a complete is name, address, phone number, and email. That's a complete. Some of you have name and an email. Some of you have name, phone number, name, address. You've got to be very diligent about learning what number that is. So how many are un incompletes with email, name, phone, name, name, address, or combination of the above? Meaning you don't have name, address, phone number, and email. So you're consciously saying to yourself, 
starting January 2nd, I'm going to figure out who these three incompletes a day are and research them, call them, text them, email. I'm going to figure out who they are, what their address is, and how I can help them. So you're consciously cleaning up your database, right? You're cleaning up your database. Now, I'm going to give you a suggestion here, and some of you will not do this. Shame on you, and some will pay attention. I tell this to everybody. Create a field in that person's contact information. So let's say you sold Joe Smith a house, he and his wife, Mary, and the commission was $10,000. You create a field with a dollar sign and you put 10,000. Uh-oh, Joe and Mary are one out of, you know, one out of two couples that get divorced. They get divorced, they sell that house. Joe buys another house and Mary buys another house. Now, Joe is individual now and, and so was Mary in your database. So couples you split them out. So Joe now is worth $18,000 and Mary is now worth $18,000. Mary sends you a referral from her sister moving to town and that was a 6,000. She's now worth 24,000. How valuable is your database when you go to negotiate with someone, some agent, some team to take over your database and you build a residual income from your database and you say, Here's 500 people and what I've earned over the years. So put it in the chat box. Did that make sense? Because if it didn't, I'm going to repeat it again until it does. Yes or no? Does that make sense that you start logging? Yes. Great. 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 Great, Jose. Great. And so now you are putting a value to your database. If I said to you, pull up your 10 best clients who, gave, who you earn the most money with, pull up your next 25, the next 25. You are now categorizing the value of those clients. And to me, that is an incredible way. I tell agents all the time to do it. If you do it, not very many, but if you're looking at what your value of your database is down in the future, think about if you were to partner with an agent and they came to you with a database, with a field, with a dollar sign, with every single, the, the total amount of money they've made from that client. Not only that, if you have an assistant and they look up that name as they're caught, this person calls in, oh, Mr. Johnson, thank you for calling. You live on Cherry Street. You must be calling about your home to speak to Jose, to Monica, to Betty, whatever. And they can see that, wow, this client's worth $52,000. Everybody kind of sits up and go, this is a good client. This is somebody. But we always want to treat the clients at the same level, right? You know, sources of business the last five years. So if, would you prefer, well, I'll get to the questions in a minute. Sources of business the last five years. you got to track your business sources. And whether you do it on a Google spreadsheet, you do it on Excel, you got to go back and track those sources of business. And then you've got to have your trends report on KW. You've got that. You've got to track that. So if you know that you're going to retire or step to the side, there's three things in exit strategy. One is you step to the side, which means you do a few deals here and there of your friends, family, and people you just want to do, deal with. You step back, which means you're not selling, but you're involved in some of the, the processes, the P&Ls and that thing. Or you step completely out and you take a residual check. We'll get to that. But here's the thing. you got to know the sources of your business. And you have to have a profit and loss statement. If you're going to merge your business with someone, and I work with this with people all the time, and I've seen the most horrific things happen. And I've seen some of the best things that have happened. So the profit and loss statement is critical to your success of merging a business if you're going to do that or selling your business. Or we'll get through all the different steps you can go through coming up. And obviously, I say always look at the tax returns. Now, I understand below the line and above the line and you put all your kids cell phones you know in your business expenses but that's really below the line and i know you're putting it through you know which is whatever fine but let's look at what really is your tax returns and how they match your p and l's because there's been a lot of times in some of the mergers or the combining a business that there was like what what's this what happened here you know, you have to have a record of marketing expenses and the return. So the ROI, you know, how many in your Facebook, 
Well, that's pretty important, isn't it? So are you diligent about growing your Facebook? Facebook marketing, what have you done that's worked? Where are you logging all of this information? So if I came to you and I said, I want to buy your business, I want to merge our businesses together, what could you show me? So this is a simple thing to create a file in your computer. You know, if you're like me, I like paper, you know, plant a tree, kill one. Then I would print it off and start putting it in a notebook that says exit. So that I can show the value of my business and how it's grown and what I've done. List of the top 50 clients and the value dollar signs. I just went through all of that. Lead generation systems and the percentage of business. Where does your business come from? So if you have client appreciation parties, what percentage of business comes from there? If you door knock, if you do open houses, if you do, um, you know, holiday calls, if you do, you know, four calls a year. You send out your emails. What is your strategy for some of these things? So hopefully that slide is an important slide to start thinking about the value of your business. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So why do agents exit? Why do agents leave the business? So on this slide, Stephanie's going to change this slide. One is they've earned enough money. So Steph, are you having trouble moving that slide? Okay, there we go. All right, so they exit their business's earnings. They've made enough. They bought enough income property. They have passive income. And they also have, you know, passive income from, let's say, profit share. Number two, opportunity. They want to move on to do something else. Sometimes uh, agents want to be a coach. Sometimes agents want to leave the industry altogether. And they buy, believe me, this is a true story. Agent wanted to buy a Subway's because he loves Subway's and he thought it was a great, great, um, you know, franchise. So they wanted to also then take another opportunity. They had their business that was profitable. They were making money from that and they moved on to something else. And some people have gone back to teaching. Some people have gone back to volunteering. So you have to know what, if there is an opportunity that you'd like to do in the future. Retirement. They just say, you know what? I've run the race. I'm done. And so they have that. Number four is going to be huge this year. Huge is burnout. They are projecting NAR, Gary Keller, all the franchises that there will be 400,000 agents leaving the business. Now, I know that's not you because you showed up during holiday time to be on a call with Monica Reynolds. So burnout. They're just done. It's over. I'm done. So think about people in your market center. Think about people in your um, market area. Who are some of the agents that are, maybe they're old enough to go, hey, I'm done. This, this real estate's getting nutty. Or I'm just done. You know, I don't want to do it anymore. But they have database. They know people. So should you be merging with their businesses? I'll show you how to do that coming in. Hang on. Health reasons. They just don't want the stress of real estate unless you know how to manage it properly. Sometimes it can be extremely pro uh, problematic. And we've all felt those problematic issues and those stress times and getting something closed and gosh, everything could go haywire or did. Divorce, okay? Sometimes agents, they get divorced and sometimes it's a team, husband and wife, or sometimes it's just like, you know what? I'm done with the business you know, for whatever reasons. And then succession. Um, we got a uh, call today where there's a gentleman whose son is going to start taking over their business and they want some help with that. <sighs> there's nothing like family and succession in the business. And sometimes you have to really vet that family out. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide. So on the next slide, it's going to talk about the five ways to exit your business. Okay. So you're going to hire your replacement. Now I'll dive a little deeper into some of these things. You're going to partner with someone, which means you're still involved in the business and you've divided up who's doing what. You become a referral company. Again, remember there's 400,000 agents projected to leave the business this year. You just sell it outright. I've known agents who have sold it outright. That is not so common right now. That one is not so common. It used to be when dinosaurs were walking around when I was, you know, a little bit younger. And so that was a true story there. I don't see that happening now. If it does, that's amazing. All right. And some just 
what we call drop the mic and walk away. They're just done. They just drop the mic, they're done. And that's the craziest thing to do. It's just not the right thing to do. So looking at that, let's go to the next slide and let's talk about hiring your replacement. Okay, so the most important thing to do is to hire your replacement from the bench. Who are you grooming up? Who are you spending time with? You know, who is the person that is going to be the most valuable to you in the future? And who has what I call the shiny eyes? They're looking for the opportunity. What's next? What do, how do I get in the business? How do I become a profit share person? How do I become an owner of percentages? So you hire from the bench. So true story. Chris Heller, who used to be the CEO of Keller Williams, what, eight, nine years ago, I used to coach him and I knew him for 20 years before I decided to take over his team. And I coached him for seven years and I coached his assistants, I coached his buyer agents, and he finally got me to say, okay, I'll take over the team. So I'm technically was on the bench because I knew everybody and I knew how Chris liked things and I knew how uh, I knew the business I was stepping in and I knew exactly what it was going to take. So Chris Heller netted a million dollars every year for seven years and never walked in the business. Did he check on on the P&Ls once a month? Oh, you bet you he did. And so it was a great, great partnership because he was gone, yet not gone, if that makes any sense, because he was the CEO. He's also the president of KWRI uh, Worldwide. Okay, number three, develop the perfect partner profile. What would that person be like? Who do you need that would fit in with your clientele? You know, start writing a list. Who's the perfect person? Because if you don't figure that out, you won't know that person if they show up. And so then you start looking on your team. Who can you grow up? Who can you groom up? Who can become that person? You know, I love this one, number four. When I worked for Dave Ramsey for four or five years, almost five years, he always would take out the person that they were hiring or if, you know, his organization has 700 employees now or the, the direct report, the supervisor would take out that person and their wife or their husband or their spouse, significant other. They didn't have one then the mother, the father, a friend just to get to know them at dinner and to see how they interacted. True story, Dave Ramsey said, uh, there was a uh, man that they were very excited about bringing into some leadership roles. And his wife said, well, I want to make this clear. We have three kids and he will be home at five o'clock every day or he's not taking this job. So we knew he knew Garrett. <laughs> Dave said, I knew right away that this was going to be a challenge and he can't miss any school things and he can't do this and he can't do that. So you know, they didn't hire the guy because they really thought that this might be a challenge. And sometimes you'll meet a totally crazy person at dinner and you go, wow, they're married to crazy or that's her significant other. So remember, are they are they connected to crazy? Because crazy comes to the office no matter what you try to do. OK, so, you know, you always hire six months for final approval. So when everybody's merging a business or trying to bring another business together, I always say, do not get married totally until it's six months down the road and you've worked out all the kinks because there are so many hidden things that can happen and determine salary and bonuses. That number six really needs to be expanded. You need to have the same respect for the dollar. You can't just willy nilly do things. You have to have a very clear budget. So for someone that I'm working with, every penny's accountable no one gets to just carte blanche, have a company credit card and buy this or do this or do that without accountability on it, without having a conversation. And so that's a critical piece. How do they handle money? Do they have a respect for money? So if you were, I'm going to give a bad exaggeration. If you were going to partner with someone and they had an IRS debt of 100000 um, their credit cards were maxed out to 200,000, true story. Would you think that that's someone who understands how to budget in money? And I know hard times can come and go and things and crazy stuff, but I'm still wondering what that story is, right? 
Okay, so that's how you hire your replacement. Okay, the next slide. What if you decide you're going to partner? Okay, all right. So here's the partner thing. Responsibilities, cost, staff, lead generation, and income. How are you going to divide all that up? So let's say that one partner says, well, I want to recruit, grow the team, and I'll run the buyer team, and I don't want to sell houses anymore. I'll just kind of get the leads to, to agents on our team. Okay. Then the other person says, well, I'll take listings. Okay. Then what's the cost of staff? How are we sharing that? What's the agreement on lead generation? And how are we going to do all these splits? Because if I'm going out seven days a week taking listings and you're technically the office sales manager because you want more of an eight to five job, how are we going to separate all that and make that fair? So those are hard conversations. The paths to partnering. Okay, so when you look at a true partnership model, you have to share responsibilities. You share costs, including staff and lead generation. So a lot of you will say, well, this is my database. And this is your database. And so whatever we get out of that belongs to us. And then we have a new database. That gets very complicated. The best way is that both of the databases come together. However, do they have as many as you do in a database? Is their database clean and crisp? And those are people rather than unmets. Are they mets? Do they know the brand? Do they know the name? You know, and so you're looking at, you know, salaries can be used to adjust for fairness and income based on responsibilities. So they're those kind of conversations. Shared service models, shared responsibility, shared costs, shared staff, share, shared lead generation and income. No one gets to spend any money when you have a partner. So I always say, you know, you're going into a marriage. And this marriage is a highly accountable marriage when it comes to production and money and the goals. So one agent that's partnered with another agent can't just go take six months off a year and take a check. So you have to have the same calendar commitment, the same responsibilities, the same work ethic. See where I'm going? It can be done, but you have to have some really strong conversations. It's usually, you know, like, Sometimes people, which is a good idea, will go to a marriage counselor to make sure they're on the same page before they get married. I think you need to have a therapist to go through, you know, how you treat money, how you treat people, how you treat responsibilities, what your work ethic, what your big picture look like. So it's on the same page. And then specialization and support models, you know, separate responsibilities, costs, separate staff. So if that's the case, then how does all that work out and who's paying for what? Okay. All right, next slide, referral company. So this can be the easiest way to do it, you know, passive. Your database, your leads, and you, re you refer them out. So you never get out of real estate, even though you say, okay, I'm done. People will still go, hey, I need to sell my house. They won't realize that you're left. And I would never say you've left. I'd always just say, send out a letter with you and who you've merged your business, say we've now partnered. Please call me if you have anything in regard to real estate. And some eventually then, you know, after a year, a year, you can then say, please call our team. Now, they are in the database as your people so that you get paid on that. There's a field there. There's a tag that says your name and this is your database. So that's a critical thing that you work out with your person you're merging with, your partner, whoever, right? And then if you're active, you're still lead generating and you're referring them out. So what's the split there? Is it 25%? Is it 30? Is it 35 for the first year? Is it 40 for the first year? Then it goes to 35. Then it goes to 25 for five years. And at the end of seven years, you may be out. At least you've got passive income coming for a while. So all those things can work out. And maybe there's never an end to the passive income. Let's go to number four. You sell your businesses outright, okay? You sell your database, you sell your business, and there's three ways to get paid. Terms, cash, and a percentage of the income. These are very difficult to do, especially in a challenging real estate market. It's a lot of stress and, and et cetera. So I would highly recommend that you look at saying as a referral company 
referral partner or you're partnering and then you can slide into a referral later. So think about that. Okay. All right. The next slide. All right. So number five is you walk away. You drop the mic and you're done. That's not very smart. You guys are all smart because you came to this call today and I appreciate it. That's not very smart. So adios and drop the mic is never going to be your choice. And if it is, you've worked all these years, you have all these relationships, you know these people. So again, going back to where I first started the call, every day, put it in your schedule that you're going to spend 20 minutes on the database, 20 minutes on looking at your profit at P&L and getting that squared away, making sure that you're following the MREA, 30, 30, 40, 30 cost of business, 30 cost of sale, 40% profit. And some of you have a higher profit than that. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Okay. So let's do an exit strategy recap on the next slide. So what is your definition of retirement? Personally, <laughs> I don't have a definition of retirement. I think it's great and it's smart to keep active and busy. I don't need to be on this call. I, you know, Fortunately, real estate's been very good to me and I've had some very, very good opportunities. So I want you to hear that, you know, that you decide what is your definition of retirement and what year is your retirement? So for example, when you look at this, what is the year for each of these strategies? And you step to the side, step back or step out. So remember, you're stepping to the side, meaning you're still doing real estate. You step back, you're probably not doing real estate, but you're in charge or you're responsible. You're looking at the P&L, you're looking at the cost and you're receiving a good percentage of the income. And then stepping out, you're receiving a percentage of the income and you're completely out, you've turned it over. Then you put it in your schedule daily. Remember, it's all about the database. That's the only asset you have. It's not your purse, your Louis Vuitton bag, your Lexus you drive, none of that stuff, none of that. It's all about the database. So put it in your schedule starting January 2nd that you're going to work on cleaning it up. You're going to determine who your top 50 loyal clients are. You're going to hire a P&L service. There's so many great ones. If you want to email me at monicakw.com, I'll put you in touch with a great P&L service that is very, very inexpensive, and yet they follow the MREA model. So they will do everything, cost of service, cost of business, and your profit. They're great. Uh, work backwards. So whenever you have a plan, you are always working backwards. So 10 years from now, this is what my life looks like. This is my passive income, or I'm still selling real estate, but I found someone on the bench and I'm grooming them up. Or 15 years from now, working it backwards. What's your nine-year plan? Your eight, your seven, six, five, four. You start with the end in mind the end in mind. And what does 2024 look like uh, to prepare for increasing the value of your business? Okay, so in your business planning, and I have a big call tomorrow, the GPS, which is goals, priority, and strategies. I'm really, really good at these because for three years, I, Gary Keller, looked mine over when I ran maps. And I want you to hear that loud and clear. I'm really good at these. And I'm going to share a team GPS and I'm going to share also the buyer agent GPS where there's strong accountability and it's not airy fairy. So all the priorities roll up to the goal. All the strategies have a plan and they roll up to the priority. The priority rolls up to the goal. So what does 2024 look like for increasing the value of your business? Who today would be a great partner, but create that perfect partner profile. I think that's really smart. Do you have an exit Jeep? No, because the Jeep, well, no, not really. Um, because the goals, priorities, and strategies, you could put one together, which is a great question. And, and I've never done that. Uh, but that's a great question. It could be done. So I'd have to work on that. But I'm good at working on that. That's a really good idea. Stephanie, make a note of that. That's a really good idea. I could probably put one together. Good idea. Never thought of that. Huh. Okay, so what does 2024 look like for increasing the value of your business? And do you have an end in mind? Are you going to be in real estate 20 years from now, which is great. And then on that, do you own 10 properties free and clear? Do you own five free and clear? Do you have X amount of money in the bank cash? 
What do you have for passive income to support your lifestyle? What could your business throw off for you if you just step to the side? Let's say you do 10 deals a year and that will net you X amount. And then you're going to take a percentage of the business. And there's a person that is running the business that is what we call the CEO of the business. You're the owner of the team, but they're the CEO. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next slide and I'll start looking at some of these questions. All right. So the next slide, so that you guys see this, and I know a lot of you know that I've done the perfect real estate assistant class since 1990 or 89, and absolutely every, every session has changed and it's updated and it's market specific. There are three calls a month. They're one hour. The first call is for agents only because we talk about salary pay and what I'm going to be working with the assistants on so that there's accountability there. You'll end up with a policy and procedures manual of at least 450 pages. This one starts March 13th. So you guys came to this call, so I'll be contacting you or you can sign up now if you like. So it starts March 13th. The other thing that I do, which is pretty phenomenal, I just happen to have this book in front of me. This is called the playbook. And there's 21 playbooks. And there's everything from lead generation to onboarding, offboarding, hiring, uh, listings, pendings, uh, buyer agents, buyers, the whole thing is in there. And that's over 600 pages. And that's a, the next slide, Stephanie. And then that one is definitely a great, great program too. We have a date in June coming up. Stephanie's going to move that slide. I know she is. Oh, there we go. Okay. So Springfield, Missouri, it's at the end of the month. Uh, in March, we have that date. In June is the 16th and 17th in Austin. And then, of course, in Puerto Vallarta. So the market center, the, the agents down there want me to come to Puerto Vallarta. And I just said, okay, sure. All right. So, Stephanie, let's go back. Um, let's go to the last slide here. Okay. So here's what I want to share with you. So I appreciate, and I've gone two minutes over, and I want to look at some of the questions if you want to hang on. It's really important that you hear this. Think about your edge exit strategy. You might be brand new to the business. Whoa, wish I'd had someone tell me to work on my exit strategy brand new to the business. What does my database look like? What does my passive income look like? How many homes am I going to own free and clear? Where's my passive uh, information coming from? And so one of the things, so the key, key th critical thing for all of you to understand is that you have this opportunity to build a massive, profitable, valuable business. And so someone asked here, um, every time I've done the perfect real estate assistant class, we have a lot of commercial assistance. So that class is for you. Things have to change a little bit. Last uh, two day boot camp that we had, we had over, I think there was 10 or 12 uh, uh, commercial brokers and assistants there. So that was great. Um, and yes, the GPS is open to everyone. And I think Miles put that in the chat box if you want to sign up for that tomorrow. Um, and then, you know, I love the question about the exits GPS. I'm going to work on that. That would be kind of fun to figure that one out. I think I could do that too. I've certainly been involved in enough of them in coaching over the years. All right. So I really appreciate you being on the call today. And I'm just hoping that you really realize a couple of things. You have an opportunity to build a massively successful business. And I've heard agents say to me, you know, I just want to pull $150,000 off each year passive. I've had one person say, you know what? I'm happy with $75,000 a year. I've had people who say, like a Chris Heller, I want a million dollars pulled off every year. Okay, fine. What is that number? And then you work and build accordingly. And when does the playbook have the... It's a little bit different. Um, and so the live class is live, obviously. And it's a little bit stronger and in-depth, but you're going to get some of the similar things, but it's a little bit more in-depth, especially with the speakers that I bring into. So with that said, everyone, think about what does 10, 15, 20 years from now look like? So for fun, put in the chat box, what would be the perfect date 2034, 2050, what are you thinking of that you would have an exit strategy? Put it in there. Let's see some accountability right now. Put it in the chat box. 
2044. Okay. All right. Wendy, 2026. Well, Wendy Jones. Okay. You got a couple of years. There, look at these people with a couple of years. Man, you guys, are, that's exciting. 2027, 2031, 2034. Okay, you guys, you work backwards. And I hope this was a good call for you to think about your database as your main asset. Understand your P&L or get one. Start putting that together. You're a business person that's going to sell your business to somebody at some point. You're going to partner with somebody. It's going to be your residual income. So when you buy a house as an income property, you always want to make sure it's the right house, that it's going to have this kind of income, et cetera. So when you're building your business, you want to throw this kind of income off. And how are you doing that? What is sustainable? So if you wake up January 2nd, you know, and you say to yourself, if I don't do anything, I'll do 20 transactions. If I don't do anything, I'll at least do 20. If I do something, I could do 75 because my marketing and things that I do, the client appreciation parties. So first of all, what's your benchmark if you do nothing? Is it five? Is it 10? Is it 20? So put in the chat box for fun so I can get kind of a feel for it. If you did nothing, nothing, how many transactions would people call you and say? How many? Wow. Okay. Jose at 40, 24, 50. Okay. There's your benchmark. So how do you triple that this year? There's the question for the exit strategy. 20, Cheryl, hook. Okay, so how do you get that to 60 this year? Where in 2025, you know that 60 times somebody's going to call you because of your relationship with them, what you do in your database, the client appreciation parties, reaching out, showing you care, getting referrals from people. How do you build that? That's easy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am a diehard, Maxine. There was a lot of coaches. Huh. Way too many of you said, no, I'm not doing these. And I said, let me do that. Because you guys, this is the time, in my opinion, that you really think about your business. And so, first of all, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You care about your business and you're going to make it valuable. Too bad for the other agents, right? Too bad. And I want you to hear this loud and clear, too. Get the message today that you have an incredible asset and how do you double that value in 2024? And what does that value look like for some of you 2034, 2027, some of you 2026? You got work to do. You got to get on that database. You got to get that P&L straightened out. And you definitely have to know all your lead generation systems and what they throw off and what the return of investment is. Okay, you can never work on this too early. That's why I said, if you're one week in the business, think about your exit strategy. Hey, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything that's happened. And you guys, this has been a great call. Hopefully you got some great information. And I so appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Miles from the MAPS team. Everyone, go get your exit strategy built. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. See you on the call maybe tomorrow. Bye-bye.